We're here with co head soccer coach Jess Job. Jess, uh, you are uh, Sterling is making his debut today. Sterling was born uh, March 5th of this past year. Uh, I want to start uh, before the pandemic. Uh, your wife Anna is, is a co head soccer coach. You're, you're coming off of a, of a season in which this team won 13 games, made it to the Southland Conference uh, Tournament Championship game. So you're going into the spring with almost everybody back. Uh, Anna is, is due to give birth in early March. What was the original plan of how y'all would handle spring practice with a new addition to the family? Yeah, um, you know, there was a lot for us to figure out. Uh, that's, that, that is for sure. Um, you know, I'd say going back to all of it, I think one, one thing that was just really neat uh, was was the opportunity to share uh, this this part of our life with our team and um, getting to announce that you know, we were expecting and then you know kind of going from there so you know we always thought uh, that our team was going to play a role in some point um, in, in some way and so that was something we always looked really forward to and obviously uh, expect to uh, make work in one way or another obviously didn't go exactly how we had planned with the pandemic and some of the you know the, the spreading virus kind of meant hands off so uh, our team hasn't really been around sterling as much as we really wanted them to but yeah i think the original plan was to uh, try and figure out some time try and get sterling on as much of a schedule as we can that would allow anna to be freed up for practices and uh, lean on some help and, and uh, some individuals who, who could help watch over him while we're at practice. And, you know, we've got uh, a, a great little sector of our facility in the upstairs part of our press press box that could uh, definitely be somewhat of a makeshift nursery if we needed to. And, you know, we, we were going to ask our girls to be flexible. And, man, they've had to do that. They've had to be that in 2020, um, whether it was with Sterling or any of the other many challenges that we face, but um, you know, asking our girls to be flexible and, and to help and be understanding of uh, you know us being new parents and and having to work through some things and get some things figured out and uh, you know, it, uh, it's not always uh, it doesn't always go the way that we we want it to go. You know, he's all smiles before you hit record and then <laughs> now, what's going on? You're making your debut right. <laughs> Smile, smile through the camera. If memory serves me correctly, uh, you know, y'all had Sterling March 5th. I, you know, the camp had, had just started. You were back at, at practice the next day. Um, what, obviously, so many negative things have, have come from this pandemic. But what has it meant to be able to spend more of that time with, with Anna and Sterling throughout those, especially those first early weeks and months? Yeah, it's been really special. Uh, that has been really part of the very unique experience for us as a family is uh, you know, the the just circumstances uh, around the pandemic that we were at home and uh, spent a lot more time with him and got to really see him develop and grow and um, you know took a lot of things way out of order and uh, disrupted a lot of our normal daily lives and what we were doing and the focus we had with our team at the time um, but as a family, um, it was pretty neat. It was really, I think that's going to be one thing we look back on and, and just think what a unique time it was. Uh, just not, not only to start a family, but just sort of get to know him, get our feet underneath us as parents and kind of get into a rhythm a little bit there. So yeah, it was, it was really neat. Um, it was really neat. We were just, uh, we, we were in our first week of 20 hours. I mean, we had just started really getting into the flow of things, moving from, from our eight hour period to our 20 hour period. Um, and things kind of got, got called off. And, um, you know, I know there was so much hype around not just what we were doing with our team and the momentum that we were building and the direction we were moving, but also, uh, you know, the anticipation for our team to get to know Sterling and, get to see him and kind of this new addition to our NSU soccer family, so to speak. And then kind of for all of that to kind of just get pulled, pulled apart and pulled away so quickly was you know, disappointing for them, I know. Um, but uh, for us as a family, it was pretty, pretty special for us to have that time. It was really neat. I know, um, you know, you, you've had it at least one team function at your house since everybody's come back for the fall. Has, has there been some of that time for 
this team to get to know Sterling and, and just be around him at all? Yeah, we've had quite a quite a few uh, gatherings at our home uh, since since we've returned this semester. Now they look a little bit different. Uh, we're hanging out in the backyard. Uh, we've got some social distancing things in play and you know, wearing masks. That's one thing we've been trying to figure out. Um, you know, I know our our dog Dirk is really uncomfortable with it all, which he's typically not, and uh, we think that's because we're all wearing masks, and it just is a little little different for him. You know, Sterling hasn't had that same reaction, um, but you know, I know a lot of the girls have been really eager to be hands on and hold them and cuddle with them, and we've you know, not quite gotten there just yet with everything that's still going on and wanting to you know, just get over the hump, so to speak, with this pandemic and and kind of get some control and and some sense of security in that area, but. Uh, they've it's allowed them to to see Anna and I together with Sterling a lot more and uh just see Sterling grow I know since they've been back already there's been so many new things you know Sterling turned holding his head up and looking around and being reactive the girls will come up and you know that's a good catch <laughs> yeah. um this is a whole new element to uh, these interviews that um really really having to work through so uh, but no it's been it's it's been a lot of fun, I think, for the girls to see him and, and get to know him a little bit. And um, he's at this stage right now where he's just developing so quickly. You're starting to see his personality and he's reacting to things. And he'll come up and you know make some sounds and he'll, he'll coo and laugh and, and smile back at you. So that's been really neat. There's obviously a lot of difference between a, an infant child and 18 to 21 year old players. But... Has being a, a first-time father, has that changed your perspective at all as a coach? Uh, yeah, it changes your perspective on a lot of things, that's for sure. Um, and, and yeah, it does. I mean, I think um, you know, we have always uh, tried to implement things into our program uh, that would create this family atmosphere um, and really care for our players like, like they are our own. And I think in some sense it's helped us connect it's it's helped us kind of really develop that family atmosphere a little bit more as they get to see Anna and I in a new role and get to see us taking on these new challenges and I think you know it makes us uh be a little more human I think to to them at times where they get to see this this different side they get to see kind of some intimate parts of our family and so um I think that's changed some perspective in just how we view you know, just everything that we're doing and the, uh, you know, the implications on, on how Sterling grows and how he develops and how we parent, you know, some of those things aren't, aren't that dissimilar and that, that we want to be you know, the best version of ourselves, you know, all the time. <laughs> and, um, you know, we want to do, continue to, to do that for, for our team and for our players. What, um, you know, co-head coaches, husband and wife teams aren't new to Northwestern State. This, the school has had it in volleyball and basketball and women's basketball and now soccer. What, how do you kind of um, make that work for you and Anna in terms of, you know, professionally, but also personal life. And now of course, a, a, a new child too. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there is a, always a continued things for us to figure out. I mean, that's, that's, we mentioned some of the flexibility and the patience, you know, in that area, but you know, I think it's it's asking what we we ask of our players all, all the time on a daily basis, just having that growth mindset. And so I think it, for us, it's continuing to grow and continuing to figure things out, not not getting too far ahead of ourselves, but you know, one step at a time, one challenge at a time. You know, I think uh, 2020 certainly put us in positions to to grow in that area, and um, I think you know also just uh, this this hunger right now. I mean, for us, you know, we. We're, we, we've enjoyed this time as a family, but we're, we want to get back and we're excited for what this team is going to do in, 20, in 2020 and now in 2021 as the season's been pushed back. So, you know, I think it's, it's not just changed our perspective as coaches, but we hope it's changed our players' perspective as well, just how, how delicate opportunities can be. And, you know, nothing is really uh, for certain. And uh, so we want to make the most of every opportunity we get. We want to own the opportunity when we're at practice uh, to be the best that we can be and, and make use of every single day. And, um, you know, we're hoping just as a, as a group, as a program, we can just continue to grow. 
there's no playbook for, for something like this in terms of the pandemic pushing the fall season back to the spring. How do you how do you kind of navigate that at this point with fall camp underway now and and of course you know kids are going to school virtually as as well as face to face. I mean, how do you kind of navigate that as a program? Yeah, um, you know we've our our key word is continue to be flexible um, and and. I think our team's done a great job of that. A great job to uh, just to be flexible and to be willing to just overcome whatever's thrown at us. And so, you know, we're gonna ask them to continue to do that. Um, we're gonna ask them just to to continue to have a mindset, um, and I think that's gonna be a great thing for us moving forward. Um, and and I think. We, we talk a lot about details. And so, you know, these are just another one of those, you know, some of the things that the pandemic has thrown at us are just, you know, added to that list of now becomes part of our, our preparation. Um, you know, we joke about that with, you know, when you're leaving the house, it's, you know, phone, wallet, keys, and now it's mask. You know, you, you gotta have your mask and that becomes part of, kind of our equipment, part of what we do every day. And so, you know, just as, as uh, our, our reality and the new normal changes every day, just, you know, asking our team to embrace those things. And I think if we can do those and embrace those changes and embrace these challenges better than our opponents, you know, and that's where we're going to find little little bits of, you know, edge and little bits of, of advantage. So uh, just like anything else, we just we want to uh, attack the challenge and we want to face it you know, head on and, and you not run away from it, but but go right at it and figure out ways that we it can just make us that much stronger. Getting a little more to soccer specifics, uh, this team was the second youngest team in the nation last year. Uh, 0 and five start. I think you finished 13, three and one over the last uh, 17 games. Um, you know what? How did this team grow, and then how did how do you take all of that and, and continue to build? Yeah, uh, I mean it's. It's been incredible to watch uh, just the the growth, um, leaders stepping up, leaders emerging, um, followers. You know, we talk about needing both of those things, and you know, just as a as a group, just coming together. Uh, whatever your role is, I think that's one thing that was just really special about our team last year is that everybody was bought in, everybody was uh, all in for whatever that meant, um, and you know, there's. Lots of challenges within that uh, every day, and there are, you know, plenty of individuals who I think would uh, look at and assess their role and and not, and not be satisfied, and that's okay. We ask them to not be satisfied, but to always be pushing, always be wanting more, always always developing and growing uh, to to gain more or to do more or to you know, change your role, change your circumstances. But then when you are in it and you're in the moment, and, and you have a role or you have a task that's being asked of you. Now we just had individuals on the team who were just willing to to do it and be in the trenches with one another. So, you know, even last year with a really rough start, when we found ourselves zero and five. Um, we never really we never stopped believing, and I think that's a uh, you know a tribute to our our coaching staff. Uh, you know, and it it's, was extremely difficult uh, to get up every day and keep pushing and and try and find these solutions and different combinations that we're going to put our, our team in a position to be successful uh, and then attribute to our our players who were willing to go with us on that and and keep believing that uh, you know everything that we set out to accomplish last year even though we were 0 and five was still on the table and that was something we reminded them of uh, almost daily is that you know we we can still, win a conference championship. We can still put ourselves there in, in meaningful games at the end of the season. And and we did that. And we just, we, we were able to you know, get a, a grind out a win. Um, and, you know, for that first win and um, at you know, Jackson State. And then, you know, you know, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't great, but we were able to celebrate a win. And we got back on the bus, you know, knowing that we had, we had gotten and, and, and did what we came to do. And then that was just a little bit of momentum. And then we just grabbed every little bit that we could and just kept running with it. So, um, yeah, it, it's been really, really amazing to see them grow. Um, really proud of them for uh, just how hard they worked to overcome some of those challenges. And, um, you know, I think it really set the table for 
uh, a year in 2020, 2021, uh, where you know, in some some regard, we had that excuse last year. We had the excuse of being young, of of not having the experience, not having postseason experience. For for ninety five percent of our roster had never played in a postseason game. So, you know, this year um, we can we can say we have that experience and we can draw from it. And um, we're really excited. You know, what we've already seen so far this fall, although it's been very little, with uh, not just you know the slow start with the pandemic, but now Hurricane Laura and you know, so many other things. So, uh, but but already with just so much to be encouraged about. Um, man, it's competitive and it's fun to watch. And uh, as a coach, it's a great place to be because there's so many questions about you know, who's who could fill this void or that void, and, and who's going to play where and what combinations. Um, it's a competitive roster, and that's really really fun to watch. And I think the players sense that also, and they they come to practice excited and. And ready to go, and, and and they're working really hard. So we've seen it, seen that already from them. And if we can uh, continue to build off that, then um, you know we're we're really excited for what's to come. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you.